So we'll uh, we'll come to a seated position, and I've lost my camera, haven't I? Yes. We'll come to a seated position. Find that nice tall spine. Bring our hand to our belly, and just start taking some nice easy breaths in and out. Maybe breathing in for a count of three or four, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then again, breathing out at the same speed. And then I'll scoot back so you can see a bit better from here. Let's just give the spine a bit of a warm up. So we'll round the spine down, tucking the chin. And then inhale to lift it up, stretching out the back. And we'll just take a couple of these in our own breath. And then come back to neutral and we'll take the hands into the air and we'll take a twist whichever way you want to go and then we'll come back to center we'll take the hands up again and we'll take that twist on the other side And then we'll come back to centre again. And we'll come to stand at the top of our mat. And we're going to skip the sun salutations today and do some bit longer moon salutations, given it's nearly the longest day. So we'll come to stand nice and tall, find our mountain pose, hands reach down, crown of the head reaches up. And we'll inhale the arms up and then we'll take them over to the right side. Find your length down the left side of the body and then we'll come back up to center keeping the arms up and we'll go over to our left. And then we'll come back to center and we'll take our legs and our arms wide to form a star. And then from here, we'll come down into a wide legged forward fold. And we'll gently bring the body back up, find our star again. And then we'll come down to the right leg, keeping the feet pointing to the front of the mat. Should feel a big stretch down the back of that right leg. Take it gently, we're fairly early on. And then we'll come back up, find our star, and we'll take that on the other side. And then we'll bring everything back in and raise our arms up to find that pencil again and come down into a nice deep forward fold bring in the chest down towards the knees bending the knees as much as you need to and then we'll step that left leg back and bring the knee down so we're in our low lunge and come up to crescent lunge if your back feels okay take your hands backwards follow them with the gaze if you can And we'll come forward and we'll send that right knee to meet the left 
And then again, we'll take the arms up and backwards. And then come back. And this time, we'll step that left knee up. So we're in low lunge on the other side now. And finally, one more crescent lunge. Then bring the arms forward, send that left leg back, tuck the toes and push your hips up and back to find our first down dog. Open up those shoulders, find that long spine all the way down the back of your body. And then from here, I'm going to take the right leg into the air, the three-legged dog, keep the hips pointing the ground. And then bring it back down, find your down dog again, and then take that left leg up. And bring it back down, and bring the whole body down into an upward facing dog. So keep your arms straight, knees are on the ground, looking up if you can. And then we'll push ourselves all the way back into a child's pose, sweeping the arms behind us, bringing that forehead down to the mat. And we'll come up through tabletop and step our feet up to meet our hands, find our squat, our malasana. And then from here, we'll push all the way up back into our pencil, bending our arms overhead, and then come back down into that nice forward fold. We'll lift halfway, hands come to shin, find that nice flat back, gazing forward, and then back down into the fold. And then we'll bring the arms all the way up. And slowly down to find our heart center. That was moon salutation B, and we'll run through that one more time. And then we'll come back down to the mat. So we'll sweep the arms up, find our pencil. And then come all the way down to a forward fold. Sweep the arms up again, and this time we'll take those side bends over to the right, and then coming back to centre and flowing over to the left. Coming back to centre again, taking our legs nice and wide, finding our star shape and then coming down into that wide leg forward fold. Raising back up. Coming down to our right leg for that side stretch. And then coming back up again and taking it over to the other side. Bringing everything back to our pencil. And then diving forward into our forward fold. Left leg steps back to find our low lunge. And we come through into our crescent lunge. Maybe your back's feeling a bit more bendy now. Maybe not. And then we'll come back down, send that right knee to meet the left knee. And again, we'll sweep the arms up and back. You going to do some yoga then, Ma? Yeah. 
And then we'll take that left foot forward. Can you do the crescent lunge with us? And we'll take the arms up and back. Come back forward, plant the hands, turn that leg back and push up to find our down dog. And then you can take that right leg up, three legged dog, hips still pointing to the ground. Doesn't matter how high you get the leg, bring it back down, and send the left leg up. <laughs> I did it this time. Oh, yeah, good job. <laughs> bring it back down, find your down dog, and then sweep it all the way forward to find your up dog. Can you do up dog, Venla? Yeah. <laughs> and then let's sweep it back. Find our child's pose, forehead on the mat. Arms resting by the ankles. <laughs> and then we'll bring the hands forward. Step the feet up to meet it. Find our squat. How's your squat, little munch? Oh yeah, it's a good squat. You've got your heels on the ground. And then we'll come all the way up. And our hands overhead. Come down into that nice forward fold, bringing the chest down to the thighs. <laughs> this is like dinosaur pose. Yeah, it is like dinosaur pose. Halfway lift, find that flat back. Arms come to shins or maybe to the floor if you've got long arms. And then we'll come back down into the fold. And then we'll come all the way up to find our pencil for a final time. And then bring our hands down, find our heart centre. Good yoga, little munch. So you're going to find your watching now. So we'll come back down to the mat, now that we've got a bit of heat in the body. And we're going to go through a bit more breathing. Are you coming to sit down with us or are you going elsewhere? And we're going to hold our breath after we've breathed out. So we'll breathe in for four, we'll breathe out for four, we'll hold for four and we'll repeat like that. So let's take a deep breath in, three, four, and then out, two, three, four, and we'll hold, two, three, four, and breathing in through the nose if possible, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and we'll hold at the bottom, two, three, four, We'll just keep going like this for a little bit. Make this your last round, then let your breathing come back to neutral. Good time to grab a drink if you want one. I'm going to move into some nice long stretches. So we'll come to sit on our bottoms with our legs out long. In fact, let's take the legs nice and wide. If you've got tight hips like me, I'm going to sit on a pillow, maybe even two pillows for the holidays. And then we're going to fold over that leg. Doesn't 
doesn't matter how far you get, whether you can reach the toes, whether you just come to the shins, should feel a, a nice big stretch down the back of the leg. As you relax into it, maybe you can go a little deeper. Maybe not. And we'll gently bring ourselves back up. And then we'll go over to the other side. Using gently into it at first. Trying to twist from the torso so you're bending from the hips nice steady deep breaths maybe you find start to find a little more space maybe not And then we'll bring ourselves back up. And we'll bring the soles of our feet together. And we'll let our knees just fall out to the side. You want whatever's comfortable. I'm doing about three fists between my feet and my groin. You can get it closer, you can take it further away if that feels more comfortable. And then again, if you've got the space, you can fold forward slightly. It's a lot easier if you're on, uh, if you're on a cushion. I'm trying to keep the back straight here. And again, just bending from the hips if you've got space. And then we'll come up and we'll come to sit on our knees in hero pose, sit on our ankles. So again, finding that nice tall spine. If you need to stick a cushion under your ankles, above your ankles, that can make it easier sometimes. And if you've got space, Take the ankles wide and put your bum in the space between them. I'm going to stick a pillow there, just so I've got space. And then if you've still got space, gently walk your arms back, just as far down as is comfortable. If you start getting any intense pain in your knee, come back up. But if you just feel a nice stretch, you're in a good position. At any point you find that um, you started okay and you felt okay in a pose, but then it gets more uncomfortable. I know when I'm doing that in a yoga class, I'm like, well, I don't want to move now because I look silly. So I hereby give you permission to come out of the pose to adjust, to do whatever you need to do to find something that's comfortable. Again, maybe after a minute, you find there's a bit more space that you can sink into. And 
and we'll make our way up here and we'll come onto all fours but we're going to turn our wrists back so that they are facing our knees and then we're just going to if that's comfortable you can gently move backward a little bit stretching out those wrists it's quite an intense one Gently come forward. Make sure you're all the way forward before you turn your wrist back to face the front. And then from here, we'll step that right foot out between the hands. Find our, our low lizard. And then just sink down if you can. difficult one to to prop up with cushions this one so we won't stay here too long try and keep that steady breath in and out through your nose and then we'll pick that right leg up and we'll send it all the way back out behind us toes into the ground, gently pushing the heel away to stretch out the calf. If you want, you can come down onto your forearms here, if that's more comfortable. And then we'll come back up and we'll take that right leg right across the front come in parallel to the front of our mat and we'll come into our pigeon pose doesn't matter if you get it at 90 degrees or it's back here doesn't matter where it is you could shove a, a cushion under that hip might make it a bit more comfortable and then again just try and melt those hips melt your hips towards the ground you should feel a big stretch in your glute here called king pigeon pose I assume because it's the king of all yoga poses and then we'll send that right leg back so that we're back on all fours and we'll take that left leg forward step it outside of the hands and we're finding our, our lizard pose on this side if you're super flexible, you can get down onto your forearms in lizard. But I'm not that flexible, so I'm staying here. And drop the head if that feels easier. Again, melting down into any space the hips have to offer. And we'll take that left foot behind us, pushing the toes into the ground, gently pushing the heel towards the floor. 
as we stretch out the left calf. And then we'll take that left leg parallel to the top of the mat, finding our pigeon pose on the other side, shoving that cushion back under your hip, that feels good. You could also come down onto your forearms here. I think it works better staying upright and trying to keep the body above the hips to get the stretch. But it can sometimes be easier if you want to come down here. And we'll take that left leg back. We'll come down to our forearms, bringing the rest of our body down. 90 degree bend at the elbows in sphinx pose. If you've got space, take the gaze up to the sky. I spent a lot of today hunched over the computer and then I got on the turbo. So I'm really, pleased about these back openers. Pay attention to what your lower body is doing. Is there any tension there that you can release? Letting the legs fall apart. And then from here we're going to come all the way down and I want you to send that right arm out into a T. So it's that angle. And then take that left arm and just push into the ground a little. And it should stretch out the shoulders, stretch out the chest. And then we'll bring it back in and we'll send that left arm out, keeping that left shoulder on the floor and pushing up with the right arm to stretch out the other side. And bring your head to the mat, that feels good. from here and we'll find a 90 degree bend in the knees and we'll send the arms out long and bring the head down to the mat for extended puppy another nice back opener the more you walk the hands forward here the more you're going to open your upper back and your shoulders but if that's too intense just walk the hands in towards the body a little
back up and we'll bring our feet up to our hands again find our squat I'm going to spend a bit of time here so if your heels don't reach the ground maybe stick some cushions under them And from here we'll sit back onto our bottoms and bring your, your left leg in so it crosses over and then take the other leg and cross it to the outside and then twist back towards that first leg trying to hook the arm around the knee and bring your other arm behind you take that twist on the other side just bringing that leg in to your bum crossing the other leg over and then again crossing the top of your body bringing the other arm behind it still trying to find some length in the spine uncurl again and we'll come to lie on our backs and we'll take the right leg and we'll cross it across the thigh and then we'll reach through the gap and here you can grab the back of the thigh you can grab the shin if you've got space Aim to get the shoulders down onto the ground, but if you can't, it doesn't matter. The shoulders can be off the ground, you can grab the back of the thigh. You can be up here, whatever's comfortable. And again, you should feel a big stretch in the glute. the leg and then we'll take the left leg across and again we'll grab hold of wherever is comfortable to grab hold bring that leg in stretching out the left glute this time Trying to melt those shoulders down towards the mat. And then we'll release the legs again and grab 
your cushions, blankets, bolsters, whatever you've got. And we're going to slide it under our lower back. I'm going to double fold mine to get some more space. I'm going to come into a supported bridge. So, feet fairly close to the bum. Shoulders on the ground. You can bring the arms down by the side. And just let whatever props you've got do a bit of the lifting for you. Again, focusing on that nasal breathing. And from here, keep the feet roughly where they are, but just let the legs flop over to the right side. You might find you need to readjust your props under your back. Maybe push them a bit further down. And you should find your knee connects roughly with your ankle or your sole of the other foot. And bring the arms into cactus if that feels good. bring the legs back to centre and we'll let them flop over to the other side. Bring that big twist down the back. And letting their shoulders melt towards the floor. As you breathe into the pose. And then we'll bring the legs back to centre. We'll take away any props that we've shoved under our back. And we'll set up for our Shavasana. So if you did take any layers off, now's a good time to put them back on. And we'll send the feet out nice and wide. Let the hands come down by our sides, or to the belly if you prefer that. And we'll scan through the body. Looking for tension points. Check in the forehead, the cheeks, the jaw, the neck, trying to melt those shoulders down into the floor, letting the arms fall down, letting the hands do whatever feels most natural, allowing the back and the hips to come down, feeling weightless. Allowing the legs to fall wherever they fall, and the feet as well. And then bringing our attention to our breath. Slow, steady breathing that allows us to more efficiently oxygenate our lungs.
the end of the year is a nice time to to look back on what may have been a challenging year but I find the more I look back on it the more I find that actually a lot of cool stuff happened and it certainly wasn't the the year I was expecting but there were many things to be grateful for in there that provide some balance to the challenges that we faced. And I like to remind myself that of all the people that have ever lived not many of them had access to wikipedia the whole sum of human knowledge just spaffed onto the internet for anyone to access for free not everyone had the video conferencing software that let us communicate with our loved ones no matter where they are in the world or what's going on Not many of them had access to a vaccine that can be developed in 10 months. Probably the, the best time to ever be alive so far. Bring our attention back to our bodies, the ground beneath us and the contact. And then we'll start introducing some movement, wiggling the hands, the fingers, the toes, taking that movement into the ankles, the arms. If you've got space, bring the legs together, take the arms overhead into one final pencil stretch. And then hug the knees into the chest maybe have a little roll around side to side if that feels good on the lower back then with the eyes closed or with them open make your way up to a seated position anything that feels comfortable find length in the spine one more time, roll the shoulders up to the ear, down the back, bring the hands to heart centre and gently drop the chin. Namaste. Thank you for coming to practice tonight and have a great rest of the year.